Okay guys, so today we've got yet another video on a way to animate elements in Bricks Builder. Um, bear me out because it's uh, it's actually, I think it's quite unique. The previous method I had demonstrated was CSS to override the standard Bricks animations and the interactions. Um, and some time ago I did another video showing how to add your own animation names to the uh, Bricks animation list and then add your own CSS with keyframes for that. Uh, earlier this week there was a question in one of the forums basically asking how to do an animation on Element using interactions by adding um, attributes to the, to the Element. And at first I thought, it doesn't sound like a great way to do it, but when I figured out how it worked, um, it actually is a pretty good tool to have in your kit uh, for when you need it. So what I'll do is I'll quickly show you the concept. Uh, I'll then pull the parts, start again, and build it up from the start and show you how it actually works. So the concept here is, if you see this photo here, this image here, at the moment, if we look at that image, the image is uh, da -da -da, in the viewport. And we've got a transform none and filter none. Now that's a style attribute which we're adding using interactions when it's in the viewport. When it's outside of the viewport, it removes that style attribute. And what we have is uh, just looking here. So we've got our filter of opacity of 10%. I'll show you why shortly. And we've got a transform here, which is translating our X. Uh, scaling, transverting Z, uh, rotating Z, rotating Y, rotating X. Uh, and I've actually done this in 3D so I can show you how that works as well. Um, now, what happens is that that is the default state of the element. When it comes into view, it animates because we're telling it to remove that state and remove and set the transform back to none and the filter back to none. So uh, this thing isn't updating. I'll just click away and click back. So we've got transform none, filter none, which overrides the settings. Now these settings here are done using the Bricks settings UI, which is where it makes it unique in the sense that you can apply whatever you want um, for your starting point, and it will animate from that through to uh, having no animation, sorry, no transform, no filter. I think it's not a bad uh, option to have. So let's look at how that works. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is that I'm currently on Bricks 1.9.7.1, and today is the 20th of April 2024. If you're looking at this in a future date, some of the Bricks settings may have changed, and this may be different. So um, got to say that because things change, and then people start asking questions about, hey, that doesn't match up with your video. So. All right, that said, let's have a look at the actual builder and a couple of the issues with this first. So the first thing is that you set your initial state using the um, builder. So if I go into my CSS here, go into my CSS filters, I've set my opacity there. I can set it to higher or lower there, so, but we need to be able to see it in the, in the builder. Uh, and then for my transform, I've set my transform there using the, again, the settings UI. So the downside here is that what you see in the builder is not the final stage of the transition. It is the beginning stage of the transition or transition from. So that's the first downside of doing this. The second downside of doing this is the way these interactions work. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we take that out of view, uh, as soon as any part of that element is within the viewport, it animates. And uh, you can see it there, so even from the top, we go out of the viewport. As soon as any part of it is in the viewport, it animates. So with GSAP uh, and uh, intersection observers, you can set number of pixels from the top or the percentage from the top and bottom uh, so that it will start animating once it gets to or transitioning once it gets to that point unfortunately there is no setting in bricks to do this so if we look at the uh, interactions here the end of viewport uh, we've got our 
end of viewport here, but there's no threshold for the top or bottom. So that doesn't currently exist. If you're viewing this in the future, that may exist, but currently, as of today, we do not have a threshold from the top or bottom for our end of viewport. So it's basically as soon as the element touches the viewport, it starts uh, behaving. In the, uh, it starts animating. All right, so that's the kind of downside to it. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of my directions. I'll move that out of the div. Can I get rid of all my directions here? Why can I not see my active directions? Okay. Get rid of those interactions. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the class that I created, so the animate class. I'm going to delete that. And we're going to start from scratch. And I'm just going to refresh because Bricks retains in memory the uh, styles when you delete them. Okay, so we're starting from scratch. We basically have a plain old image. And if we go in here, it's just an image. It's not doing anything whatsoever. So what we want to do first is we want to transition this image. So we're going to set the uh, end of the CSS tab. We're going to set the CSS filter of opacity to, you know, just barely visible because we don't want it to be visible straight away. So just, just so we can see it a little bit. Um, we're then going to go to our transforms. And by the way, I'm using uh, automatic theme shortcuts here. If you don't have automatic theme, you can certainly get to those directly through the style here. I just like these shortcuts. So, uh, so we're going to transform and we're going to translate the X by minus 60 pixels. We're going to translate uh, scale by 1.2, 1 1.2. 1 uh, let's do a rotation on the X axis of say 20. Y20 and the Z, we'll just do say five degrees on the Z. Oh, not 55. Uh, now, this isn't going to actually, because we haven't got a perspective container on this, it's not actually going to show us a 3D transition of the X and Y rotation, uh, only the Z axis rotation, which is going around that uh, Z axis. So that's right to the right or left. So it's not going to show us until the next stage, which I'll show you shortly. So there's our initial state. Now, if I save that, have a look at the front end. In fact, I might just uh, do it from here so that we can see as we edit. So that's our initial state. All we've done is use the settings UI to do that. In fact, I just messed up because what I should have done is done this on a class. I'm just going to do a class. I'm going to call that animate on left. NMO, animate from left. All right, so we've got a class that we're going to put these on. Always do it on a class, because then every element you apply it to will have the same settings. So uh, what we're going to do first is go into our CSS3 here, and we're going to drop our opacity to just something that's barely visible, so we can just see it in the editor. Um, that's too much, maybe just a little bit of this. Uh, we're going to then go to our transform. And again, you can get there through these style attributes or you can get through the AT shortcuts, depending on what you have. Let's do that again. So we're going to go minus 60. We're going to go scale 1.2, 1 1.2, 1 uh, 20, 20, and 5. Okay, and we don't have a 3D, really a 3D rotation because of the, we don't have a perspective container yet. Uh, and that is our starting point. Right. Now, what we're going to do is we want to transition this properly. Now, it's got a standard transition here of E zero second, E zero seconds, which is not what we want. So I'm going to do it all. And we'll just do this over one second, and we're going to get ease, ease out. So I like the ease out because at the end of it, um, it's just a slow transition out of the transition. Okay. So what we've got here is a very simple setup. We've got some a opacity set through our filter. We've got a transition duration, and we've got a timing function here. Um, and what else do we have? And on there, we on the CSS tab. Sorry, we've got our opacity set to nine at the moment. All right. 
Let's have a look at that on the front end. It's not doing anything at all, right? So how do we make it animate? First thing we're going to do is go into interactions and we're going to add an interaction, which would be an enter viewport. And we want to select a uh, da -da -da, set attribute. We're going to set the style attribute. And here we're going to tell it we want our transform to be none. And CSS, so you need a semicolon. And we're going to do our filter to be none. OK. Let's have a look at that. There we go. See that transition then? So I refresh, transitioned. OK. But it's added the, what, what it's done here, if we have a look at the element, it's added our style transform none, but we go out of the viewport, it's still there. So it's not going to reanimate when we come back in. So we need to get rid of it by adding another interaction. And we want to, on the uh, leave viewport, we want to remove an attribute of style. We don't need any settings for that because we aren't setting a value. OK, and then what we now have is that it's in the viewport, it animates, goes out of the viewport. It should have, no, we have to refresh. It hasn't done it properly. So out of the viewport, we don't have our style attribute. Come into the viewport, we have our style attribute. Out of the viewport, our style attribute is gone. Just watching the inspector down here. So that reanimates when it comes in, right? But it's not really a proper 3D animation at this stage because we don't have any perspective. So how do we fix that? We go a div, we stick it above that image, put the image inside the div. And on that div there, we're going to put some perspective on it. A perspective of maybe 600 pixels. So this is how far away the camera effectively is, the 3D camera is away from the canvas. Save that. Okay. Look at that. Uh, that didn't look right. Let's try that again. It's more 3D. Okay, so you can see it's more of a 3D transform. Okay, there we go. So that's working already. Now, what we can now do is just add a few extra bits to it. So on our image, uh, we're going to add a uh, box shadow. Now, I'm actually using uh, ACSS, so I'm just going to use one of their utilities for that. Uh, Box Shadow XL, maybe. So it's nice and big. Uh, and we could go into the uh, settings UI, but while I'm here, I'm just going to add my border here. Uh, neutral lights, trans. 40, that'll do. That's what that looks like. So one pixel solid, uh, neutral light trans 40. Again, you can go through the border on there if you want to in the settings UI. Doesn't matter. Okay, so we've got a border around our, our image with a uh, box shadow. We've got a 3D animation happening with that. So we leave the viewport, come back into the viewport. There we go. So you can see in here, you can make this whatever you want. If you want that to be really exaggerated, you can actually, in your transforms, make that minus uh, 300. Okay, so it's way off. Okay. Did that even work? Let's save that again. There we go. So we're more of an exaggerated... Uh, animation because we told it to be th start from 300 pixels away. You know, we really want a more of a 3D effect, so we go to our div here and our CSS, we set that to maybe 200 pixels away from the canvas. Okay, see that there? Really exaggerated. Uh, move this out of the way. Yeah, super exaggerated 3D and lots of movement. Not what I would do, but just showing that you can do whatever you want to this. Uh, maybe you want to add some extra. Let's have a look in the transforms. Let's start from uh, we're on the image. We are. We're going to animate from the left. 
uh, translate the y of uh, 100px. So we're going to start from down the bottom, come up. So there you go. So you're building your animation however you want it to. All right. So the cool thing is that whatever you set in your brick settings as your starting point, the end point is going to be uh, neutral. Um, so you've got complete control over that. Um, there was one other thing I was thinking I was going to add in here. Oh, yes. So the control of the path. So we've got to ease out of there. So it goes into the animation really quickly, eases out of the animation. What if you wanted a kind of a bounce effect? Right. So let's have a look at what we've got here. We look at the ease out in Chrome DevTools. We're going to use the tools and the styles view here. And it's got this little icon here in Chrome where you can actually open up the Cubic Bezier mode. So let's say we want to have it come into the animation quickly. Let me go backwards a bit. OK, that'll do for now. Oop, just trying to select all that. And mouse trouble selecting things at the moment. So if we can go back to that. So we've grabbed our cubic biz here. Go back to our animations in our CSS tab. Change our timing function there. Put the visit cubic biz here in there. Now we've got a stepped effect. See, it comes, goes out of the animation, comes in, and it's stepped. Yeah, how cool is that? All right, so let's say we don't want that. Um, to be so much 3D. We go to the container above it, or the uh, div above it, I should say, and we see our perspective to uh, 200. Let's set that to, say, 1,000. OK, go out of the viewport, into the viewport. There we go. So not as exaggerated, right? Not as exaggerated on the 3D side of it. Let's say we make that 100. Look at that crazy 3D animation because it's just too much. We have to wait for it to go out. Sorry. There you go. So super flexible. Um, it's just another way of doing it. Tool to have in your kit. Uh, I like the idea that you can use the Bricks settings UI to set the initial state. Uh, and all you're doing is um, adding a style attribute to get rid of your transform, get rid of your filter, whatever else you apply, you have to just set that back to none or zero or whatever you whatever it takes for that particular property. Um, but it's another tool to have in your kit. There are some downsides, the main ones being that in the editor, you cut, you see the initial animation, not the um, uh, the end of it. So it's a bit hard to lay out. And the second thing is that because the interactions for enter viewport don't have a threshold for the top and bottom, you can't control when that uh, attribute gets added. So it just starts transitioning as soon as any part of that element touches the viewport. Apart from that, I think it's a pretty cool thing to have in your toolkit. What do you guys think? Let me know. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, hit the subscribe, hit the like. Thanks, guys.